Good Thursday. I hope you enjoyed Plaid Kids yesterday. I hope you watched it. And uh, today, Miss Donna is going to be uh, on craft day. She's going to be doing a little experiment that's really fun. You're going to love it. So make sure you tune in for that at 4 o'clock. And, of course, it's recorded, so anytime thereafter. Okay, here's where we at yesterday. We're, we're, we're watching Samson. He is now tied by two ties, right? And are ready to hand him over to the Philistine army. So we're going to pick up in verse 14, and it says this. As he approached Lehi, the Philistines came toward him shouting, and the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. The ropes on his arms became like charred flasks, and the bindings dropped from his hands. Finding a fresh jawbone of a donkey, he grabbed it and struck down a thousand men. So here... Again, the Holy Spirit just comes upon Samson, the grace of God, right? You think of all the things he's done, and God uses him again. He uses him again, even though he such, has such a sinful nature. He takes the jawbone of a donkey, all right? Jawbone of an ass, if you talk in King James Version. And he takes and he kills 1,000 Philistines with it. Then Samson says this, he says in verse 16, when a donkey's, with a donkey's jawbone, I have made donkeys to them. Now, I know that makes it kind of sound when you read that, especially if you're thinking of King James, all right, that with the jawbone of an ass, I've made an ass of them. But that's not what that means, all right? It means this. The Hebrew word for donkey is very similar to heap. All right. And so what he is saying is with a donkey's jawbone, I have heaped up all these Philistines. All right. And he goes on to say, with a donkey's jawbone, I have killed a thousand men. When he finished speaking this, he threw away the jawbone and the place was called Ramoth Lehi, which means jawbone hill. If you want to know what that means in Hebrew, jawbone hill, Ramoth Lehi. Now, if you'll notice, there's something that happens here. As we see Samson gets filled with pride. You see all the different sins, and haven't we haven't we hit so many of these sins at one time or another, right? So he gets he he uh, he uh, uh, gets filled with pride when he says, "I have killed a thousand men." He didn't do anything. God, the Holy Spirit, killed a thousand men through him. All right, but he takes credit for it. So, but again, God can glorify himself in any situation through anyone. Uh, and so, you know, the biggest thing we're going to learn about Samson as we get to the end is realizing that God can use any one of us no matter what our history is. So let's go ahead and read on. So we're going to pick up in 18. It says this, because he was very thirsty, he cried out to the Lord, you have given your servant this great victory. Now he comes back and gives God the credit, right? Must I now die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? Now we see Samson praying. Now he realizes it is God that has done all this. And now he's speaking to God. This is the first of two times we actually see Samson speak and pray to God that is recorded. I'm sure he did more, but we don't see recorded in scripture. So we pick it up in 19. It says, then God opened up a hollow place in Lehi and water came out of it. When Samson drank, his strength returned and he revived. So the spring was called en Hakor. All right. And if you want to know what, what uh, and it's still there in Lehi, by the way, as we finish up that scripture. But the, the meaning of en hakor, all right, means collars spring. All right. He called to God and God provided collars spring. So what happens next? Think about this now. This man who was a man of God, who got into all the sinful nature and called upon the Lord and the Lord gave him strength to kill a thousand Philistines. After all those things, let's look what happens in verse 20. Samson led Israel for 20 years in the days of the Philistines. God made him a judge. 
Why is that important? I'll tell you why it's important. All right. We look at Samson and, and, and we see how he's done. All right. Then he turns his eyes back to God. He re, we use that word repent all the time, right? And what does repent mean? It means to turn back. Turn from our ways and back to God's ways. Okay. Quit being us and, and start looking at him. And he made him the leader for 20 years for the Israel. Now, this is all great. And it shows us that God can use every one of us. It doesn't matter what our past is. As long as we repent and we turn back to him and trust in him, he can use us. The Bible is filled with men and women who were sinners, but turned back to God and God used them for his glory. Now, I'd like to tell you this is a happy ending. He's led for 20 years, all right? But, you know, it is his nature to sometimes look at the world instead of looking at God. It is our nature through Christ to look at Jesus, but it's our nature, our sinful nature to look at the world. Well, he's the same way. So after 20 years, a woman comes into his life by the name of Delilah. And of course, that will have to wait till tomorrow. Father God, we, we again, we thank you and we see how you have used Samson. And you used him, Lord, in his sinful nature. And as he turns to you, how you, Lord God, your grace is so efficient, sufficient. Your grace has just, again, made him available, made him a vessel for your holiness. Lord, we think of him and we think of ourselves. And we look and we see ourselves and the sinful nature we can have. And yet we find out when we turn to you and quit dwelling on that, that you can use us in mighty ways. And you can be glorified. I thank you, Lord God, that you use a sinful vessel like myself. A weak vessel. That only through your Holy Spirit do I have the strength to do the things that you have me do. And I just pray all those that are listening will turn to you and be that empty vessel for your holiness. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I will see you tomorrow. We'll learn all about Delilah. God bless you all.